Well, we survived another election year, and for a lot of people, it was very, very stressful. And for some, it's still stressful for those who aren't really pleased with the results. And that is why I invited my good friend Chris Carlson to join us today on The Real Well Show. You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Chris was married to Richard Carlson, the author of the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff series, a book that swept the country about 20 years ago. At the time, Dr. Richard Carlson was considered one of the foremost experts in happiness and stress reduction. He was frequently featured on Oprah, The Today Show, The View, CNN, Fox, and over 2,000 other shows. I personally got to meet Richard when I was working at Fox News, when it was just news and not slanted. And at that time, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff had just made it to 100 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Today, it's still considered one of the fastest selling books of all time, with over 15 million copies sold worldwide. Sadly, Richard died on a flight to New York at the young age of 45 from a pulmonary embolism. His wife and my good friend, Chris Carlson, is here with us today to talk about how to deal with stress so that you can live a life full of real wealth. And while Chris is a real estate investor, today we're going to focus on how to have a more fulfilling life by learning to, well, not sweat the small stuff. Chris, welcome back to The Real Wealth Show. Oh, thank you so much, Kath. It's so wonderful to be back with you today. And your uh, the topic of your books is so appropriate today. There's so much stress, so many people sweating it. So tell me, first of all, why you came out with a revision of Don't Sweat. Well, you know, I think that um, given that the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff series is 30 years old now, which I can't believe. Um, this compilation is the best of the best. It's 365 reflections of the tried and true wisdom of don't sweat the small stuff. And it's meant to be a day by day reading. So I think, you know, it's perfect for modern times for these times, because we're taking in information so fast and people who still like to read, they want to read quickly. So the, um, chapters have been edited down so that you can really open it from any place or just read it day by day from the beginning to the end. But yeah, I think it's perfect timing for this book, given that yeah. the state of the world is the way it is. So yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect timing. 30 years ago, when your husband, Richard Carlson came out with um, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, the original, it swept the country and it changed the lives of so many people, including Oprah. You ended up on on Oprah several times. Um, and it seems that, you know, some of the newer generation isn't as familiar with it. And yet the time is so right for um, for this book to sweep the country again and to help people not sweat the small stuff. So let's just kind of talk about, obviously there are half the country today is elated and half the country is really devastated to a point where, you know, people are screaming in their cars. You've seen the videos what are some of the top points in Don't Sweat that can help people find their calm and their peace? You know, Kat, there's a whole philosophy behind Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And there's like five principles of happiness that are woven throughout these books. And these principles are pretty simple to grasp, but maybe a little bit more difficult to practice sometimes. They are understanding your thoughts and how your thoughts play a role in your behavior, your habits, um, the way you live your life. They are understanding that you have moods that come up and down like the weather. You there, It's understanding how feelings um, are really important to honor, but feelings are an important information source to what you're thinking. It's understanding that we live in separate realities, um, that you know, we, we see the world through our own lens. And these days, that's even more, like, it's even more true than ever, because the lens that we see things through has to do with the news that we watch. And so if you're watching certain news, you're going to get a lens on the way the world is, is today. And you're watching other news, you're going to get a different lens. And so that shows us so clearly 
that we are really living in um, separate realities all the time amongst our peers, even in our own families, our friends. Um, and then the last principle of happiness that we talk about is present moment living. It's bring, bringing your attention and your intention back to center grounding in the present moment. And then I like to say the plus one is returning to gratitude and compassion for others and kindness. <laughs> yeah, right? I and mean, that'd isn't be nice. that, isn't is that, that even kind of possible time? at this point? <laughs> it is though, it is. And, and it's just that when we're going through grief, which as you said, you know, half of the country is now in a grieving process. We have been told and many of us have felt on both sides that this is the election of our lifetime. Yes. So it, and, and, you know, so again, depending upon which lens you're looking through, you're going to either feel really great about the decision you made at the voting booth, or you're going to be feeling grief. And I think for the people who are feeling really great, maybe in order to like bring our country together, there, there shouldn't be a lot of gloating going on. Like there shouldn't yeah. be a lot of in your face, we won. You know, it's not a team. This is a country. This is a country that must heal the divide and come together. And, and it means that the people who have feel like they've lost the election, we need to hold strong and we need to stay with our values um, the same as we need to, if we won, we need to hold strong and stay with our values. How does Don't Sweat the Small Stuff play a role in that? Well, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff is about honoring what you value most, what matters most to you, about not letting the little things the minor annoyances, social media right now, if you're on the grieving side of things, get to you. And the way you do that is for now, take a pause. Don't just and, don't go on there. It's just right. Make you crazy. Right. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. I do that. I kind of isolate myself from certain posts, certain people, certain things just during this time of healing, you know, like just during this time where, you know, you, you want to let things calm down a little bit versus elevating them and heating them up. And then, of course, returning to gratitude. And, and I think this book comes at the turf perfect time because the best thing you could do right now if you're in that group of people that is upset is to return to your own life. Just return to living, living day to day, you know, living the things that matter most to you. And as you return to focusing on your own life and getting more present in your own life and less present in the, in the media and the social media, you'll start to grow that feeling of joy again. And you're, you can start to grow that feeling of groundedness and peace and calm that we're all searching for so much right now. Yeah, we really always have so much to be grateful for, even if the, the stuff that's out of our control feels so out of control, but to look at the things that we have, that are the blessings there. So how do you get into a state of gratitude? Because I think I have heard um, you can't be angry if you're in a state of gratitude. Is that, is that? Well, you can't be a lot of things when you're in yeah. a state of gratitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, honestly, if you're feeling low and sad and upset, the, the easiest way to change your mood is to just tune in. I like to close my eyes and place my hand on my heart and take about 10 deep breaths you know, just really deep inhales and exhales and let go of all the tension in my body, focus on my breath, and then just think of one thing I feel grateful for. There's a golden pause meditation on my website that you can download for free on don'tsweat.com. And we can put that in the show notes for people that brings you into gratitude. And it really is just 10 deep breaths and going into thinking of one thing you feel grateful for. One thing, a, a pet, a child, a, you know, a, a place that you love. It can, it absolutely reconnects your brain with your heart. Absolutely. Uh, and the heart actually, when it feels gratitude, feels joy. So, and then that transfers into us, we feel joy, we feel our mood elevates, because that's where we're focused our, that's what we focused our attention on. So let's go back to 30 years ago, when, um, when the book came out, I just think it's such a great story and such an inspiration for people who are um, working really hard on things and not feeling like they're getting the results that they want overnight, so to speak. And a lot of people looked at you and Richard like, oh my gosh, overnight success. I mean, I met you when I was working at um, Fox News, KTVU in Oakland, when Fox was just news, <laughs> didn't have a slant back then. 
Uh, and, and Richard was in the studio talking about his new book. And I ran into him in the parking lot. We talked. Turns out. No, you chased him down in the parking lot. I chased lot. him down. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I was in the elevator with him. Okay. It was, it was a, I thought, you know what? If I'm supposed to meet this person, I will. And Ooh. I left the studio and there he was in the elevator. And we ended up exiting the building together. Um, so it was meant to be in in that okay. conversation I found out we lived in the same town our kids were in the same school or they're you know playing soccer and um since then we became really good friends this was at the point where your book had just like taken off so walk us through that process of working really hard on something that other people see it like oh it just happened but what what was the journey like for you well, I mean, Richard, that book was his 10th book, and he wrote about a book a year. And so it was 10 years, 10 years of writing, 10 years of, you know, saying things the same way, and then finally finding this new format, the short chapters um, that really resonated with people. And there was something about the the title, the timing of it, um, you know, it, it, what it, we have seen over the years is that during very, very stressful times for people, they buy Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And I have seen this like cycle over and over again. Lately, his book has been in the top self-help charts again because it's we're in such a stressful time. So the flagship book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, has been selling very, very well. And so when the, the, the story is that Richard really had written many books. You can be happy no matter what, Shortcut Through Therapy, You Can Feel Good Again you know, many books. And then he wrote Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And it hit this chord because we were in a technology stage. You know, the technology stage when the the craze of um, social media, the craze of the internet, we all thought that that was going to make our lives easier. But what did it do? It didn't make our lives easier. It overwhelmed us. Because now, you're carrying around a cell phone. Now you're on email. Now you're getting notifications all the time. People had a really hard time understanding how to fit technology into their lives. And, and it didn't give us more time. It took up more time. And I think that that's what really stressed people out was, was that technology boom. And then about every 10 years, there's a whole new group of people there's about 25 year olds become 35 year olds. And it seems that 35 year olds are at a stage where they're starting to really sweat the small stuff. You know, they've got <laughs> bills to pay. They probably have a mortgage. They have a couple of kids on the way, you know, and they're starting to really understand, wow, this life is stressful. And I, I go back to college, you know, right? <laughs> I want yeah. to go back to college. And, and I, you know, I think again, that's why this timing on this new book, which is really a compilation of all the books together um, comes out at a perfect time because it brings back really just common sense wisdom and values that really we all can prescribe to and practice. And, you know, you and I both know that we have to practice life the way we want to live it. And we do small changes that make a huge difference over time. Nothing changes immediately. You have to implement small changes over time. And then suddenly your life shifts and changes in a direction that is very positive. And, and speaking that, of small changes, this story is fascinating that um, it was just one person, one person who saw it. And oh yeah, so you're an example and, and Richard was an example of just keeping moving forward to the vision, no matter what, just keeping moving forward. Yeah. Um, the tenacity, the, the tenacity. So one per, tell me about that story. The one person who discovered the book and, and then it just went off like wildfire after that. Well, there was a number of like lucky breaks that happened with the book early on. You know, one of the things that happened was <clears throat> the book was on the bottom shelf at a Barnes and Noble and like the Midwest or something. And some salesperson came by and took that book and put it on the top shelf where it could be seen. And it just sold out immediately. Like just it, it, the, the person went to look for the book and it the next day and it was gone and the, all 10 copies were completely gone. So that person took it upon uh, himself to call the other Barnes and Noble stores and say, Hey, you know, we, we think this book is 
going to be really popular. Why don't you take it from the bottom shelf and put it on the top shelf and see what <laughs> happens? <laughs> and that's how that's how the fire of Don't Sweat the Small Stuff really started was that that happened. And it just started just it, because of the timing of it and the title and where people were at, it just took off like wildfire. And that was a different, it, it was different than Richard's other books, which were all Richard was seen at that time by Wayne Dyer and other folks that were the, you know, fathers of positive, you know, the positive development, personal development movement as an up and up and coming contributor. And that book just, it just freaking took off. And some of the celebrities that, you know, that, that got their hands on it and talked about it, I think that also helped. But what were some of the things that they said about it and, and who, and who was it? <laughs> Well, like a Jennifer Aniston carried it around in her purse and so did Jennifer Lopez. And, you know, like um, Oprah, of course, she had known Richard because she he had already been on Oprah a couple times before Don't Sweat the Small Stuff came out. And when she had him on for Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, they were sitting in the green room together and she was just telling him, you know, gosh, Richard, you're, you know, this book is incredible. You're doing so well. It's, it's, you know, hitting the top charts and, and it, it really, this book has taught me how to be present and I keep it by my bedside at night. And Richard said, Oprah, say that on the air that you keep it by your bedside at night. And she laughed at him. She said, well, you don't need me to do that. I've already, you know, it's already doing so well. And he goes, Oprah, say it on the air. <laughs> And sure enough, in that interview, she says that on the air. Well, that just that line alone with the power of Oprah at that time, just put that book at the top spot. And it just continued to sell, 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 sell for two years, for two years. It was the number one, new, um, not only New York Times, but it was the number one USA Today pick over all other authors for two years in a row. And it was just an incredible run. And to this day, Richard's book is in the top 0.5% on Amazon every month. It's crazy. That's incredible. Yeah, it's really crazy. Now, a book that came out later was um, What About the Big Stuff? You know, you've experienced this firsthand. I, I know we're talking about how to stay calm and positive. Um, you had quite a, a tragedy in your life. And uh, would you kind of talk about how you were able to get through that? Because it's not a, it's not small stuff. No, absolutely. No. And you're really going through something really big. And of course, we all have, we all have big things that we go through in our lifetime. Um, but this was catastrophic big, like uh, about 10 years on the 10th anniversary of Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, exactly at the 10th anniversary. Uh, Richard got on a flight to promote his latest book. And on the descent of that flight, he had a pulmonary embolism and he was 45 years old and I was 43 years old and our daughters were 14 and 17. Um, and so, you know, that time period, um, you know, you're just, you're not really prepared for that kind of loss in midlife. You know, it just, especially it, like he walked out the door, like any other day, said yeah. goodbye and no one knew that would be the last time. No, no, we didn't know. And um, yeah, so it, it really just sent my life and the girls' lives and everyone who knew him, yours and Rich, everybody, um, kind of on a new trajectory. I mean, it was a real incredible, like, wake up on many levels and um, and just a shock, you know, a real shock. Um, how I got through that was... You know, I, I asked for a lot of support. I had a lot of support, had an amazing community, you and Rich included in that, around us. I renegotiated life. I, I sat down with both my kids' principals and, you know, worked out a whole different um, education plan for, you know, six months to a year just to help them have time to grieve. I went through a process of healing and I've, you know, written a couple books about it, Heart, Heartbroken Open. The journey, my journey through profound loss and from heartbreak to wholeness, the hero's journey to joy. In a lot of ways, I was kind of one of the most prepared, even though I was unprepared for this loss per person to go through it because I had done so much inner work. I had um, a very strong spiritual philosophy. Um, it didn't change the fact that I was, you know, really upset and, you know, that this happened to our lives and 
and that I um, went through tremendous grief. I mean, you saw it. I, I went through mm-hmm. just a real messy, messy time in life. And, and that's what we do as people as we're healing. When we're healing from something, it's messy. It's not, it's not the happy time of our lives. It's we're healing. And loss is something that you heal, you know, from. So I, I really just did my best to embrace grief. I didn't know if I'd return to a life of joy. I had no idea in the beginning. Um, it was, I, I didn't even want to live except that I had my two daughters to live for. And, um, and they really got me through that first, you know, time period where it was horrible, <laughs> beyond mm-hmm. horrible. But, um, but then you, you know, over time, um, not that time heals you, you've got to do the work, you have to allow grief to do its work on you. You've got to allow time and space for healing and for grieving. But once you go through a grieving process, you do return to a path of joy again, and you can. And I don't, I'm not one that says or believes that love is grief, but we grieve because we love. And I don't think that grief lasts forever. It's just a time period. And I will forever miss Richard. I will forever wake up every single morning and think about him and, um, and how grateful I am that I had that life with him. But I also realize the preciousness of this life and that this life is going to pass me by if I don't live it to its fullest and I don't live a life I love. And I think that we all have to realize that and we all have to you know, accept the things that are feel unacceptable at first, we have to have the courage to step into life, when it doesn't look like there's any light ahead of us, we've got to create that light, we have to look for it. And, and, um, and it takes a lot of courage to step into a new life. And it takes time too. you've got to allow yourself the time and space to heal. And again, you know, people who go through divorce and, and the losses of all kinds go through this identity crisis. It's, it's what we do as humans. We we go through an identity crisis, and then we have to refine who we are. We have to rediscover who we are. We have to let life reveal who we are, like a rebirthing. Yeah, yeah rebirthing. It's a re- rebirth, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And and uh, and if we do the work, we can come out so much stronger as a result. Most people who have achieved success in life have have gone through difficult times that made them who they are. Absolutely. And I've certainly seen you do that, and here you are carrying on the legacy of your husband and your brand real, uh, I was gonna say real wealth, <laughs> <Don't sweat. laughs> but it is real wealth. It is real wealth. <laughs> it is real wealth. It's about real wealth. Like what really matters, what really matters. And when we can um, come back and focus. And I just want to end this with one last thought that when my daughter was, um, gave birth to Mia uh, last year, exactly one year ago, she just turned one. Uh, she had high blood blood pressure, and it was really scary because the doctor said if if it's out of control, she could die. I mean, it's pretty serious, obviously. And um, so she that made her more panicked and <laughs> blood pressure worse. So um, we practiced box breathing, which is mm. you know, four breaths in, count to four, hold for four, four breaths out, count to four, four, yeah, yeah, one breath in, but four counts. Um, <clears throat> box breathing, look it up. We watched on the monitor how her blood pressure came back in line and how her heart started to calm, how she instantly Mm -hmm. could control her physical body through breath. So um, Chris is not, not, uh, this is not just foo-foo, woo-woo, you know, foofy stuff. It is really um, legitimate. Scientific. uh, Scientific. Yes. And the connection when, when you are stressed, you lose connection to your brain. You can't think properly. And through this type of breathing, it reconnects the heart to the brain. And um, the parasympathetic nervous system too, which, yeah. which is what causes panic attacks when you're off, you know, your high blood pressure goes up, your heart starts racing. Yeah. The breath is amazing to come back to. Very powerful. So Chris, where can people get your golden pause meditation? Because it is so powerful and your voice is so beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, we'll send a link. We'll put a link in the show notes um, okay. for you to download. And yeah, and you can um, go to Don't Sweat the Small Stuff every day and pick up some goodies and some discounts after you uh, purchase the book online. 
And um, yeah, and I, I just wish everybody a really wonderful season of change. Um, and, and just hold on for the ride. You know, it's like if you're in that group of people that is very upset right now, just hold on, get back to your own life and, you know, get back to what matters most to you and you'll start to feel better and you'll feel calmer again. Chris, always wonderful to see you. I love you. And Kath, I love you too. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for being here on The Real Wealth Show. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. If you'd like to get free information on how to invest in real estate, just go to realwealthshow.com where you can get access to hundreds of free webinars. You'll also get access to data on some of the fastest growing markets, as well as referrals to property teams in those markets who have property management in place to make for a turnkey investment. It's free to join. So again, just go to realwealthshow.com. I'm Kathy Fetke. Thanks for joining me here and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.